really wonderful initiative taken by ET Group. Uh, I am hopeful uh, in the next 15 minutes we would be able to discuss some uh, quality thought process towards investments, some broad directions, because as you could understand, uh, 15 minutes would be a bit too short uh, for discussing the technicalities of the product or investment process as such. Uh, to start off with, as you could all understand, there's a popular saying that uh, if you want to make your money grow, you need to make it work hard, like we do. As you could understand from this PPT that cost of money uh, sitting idle is pretty high. Although on the face value of it, the money has grown in this example, uh, investment of something around lakh of rupees in your savings account, assuming a growth rate of 35 to 4%. Yes, it has grown by 1 lakh 4,000 at the end of the year. But two forces are there, which is basically putting your money down. One is your tax and the other one is inflation. We all know about that. But today's session, as you could understand, we need to find out ways to address these issues. <clears throat> so as for the wealth creation process, as we all know, uh, discipline, money management is very important. So we'll be uh, spending a few minutes on it. To, as you could see from the slide that <clears throat> in order to achieve every individual has a financial goal. Uh, for that reason, it is important for any investments we should be particular about the facts that where we need to reach after so many years or for that reason, what are the goals we need to achieve? Financial goals could be children, education, children, marriage, your retirement planning, anything. Uh, so for this, we need to plan because as it is said that if we fail to plan, it means we are planning to fail. And for these, these days, as you could understand, things are shaping up well for the financial planning. There are professionals like financial planners, CFP certificates, certificates are there. So they can uh, help us on this front. FPSB board is their financial planning standard board. So we can take their help. Like uh, when we fall sick, we go to a doctor, visit a doctor, and uh, he, he or she takes the vital signs of our uh, body and accordingly prescribe medications. Similarly over here, once we have the financial goals written, it is very important that we should write our goals. Uh, as it is said that if you start writing things down, it's like a Kriya Shakti. You are putting your, putting your commitment over the paper, your resource, your energy is committed. You start feeling uh, more sincere towards, go, towards your goal. Uh, so this is the initial phase of your financial planning, whereby uh, once the goal is achieved, the financial planner asks from your side some basic questions like your assets, your liabilities, uh, what, more, and through some few selected sets of sequential questions, they try to gauge the risk appetite of the individual. And based on that, they give us some recommendations. So through financial planning, uh, we can assure a good ensure that the financial goals is achieved. Now, having said this, the first step, as you could understand, after sharing the data, financial planner suggests that some asset allocation, only after taking the due inputs from our site, he gives us the he or she gives us the output like what should be the asset allocation. It's very important as you could understand asset allocation as it is said that never put all your eggs in one single basket uh, because risk could be too high. We never know uh, which asset class would be growing down the line. Uh, asset class we will be discussing in the next slides. It could be equity, it could be debt, it could be gold or any other alternate asset classes. So basically, when money would be chasing asset class, that asset class would be moving. So we need to understand and for that, uh, if we take the help of professionals, it is better for us. But even then, in order to mitigate the risk, we should not allocate all our eggs in one single basket or all our uh, money in one particular asset. You never know what is in store for you. Uh, as it is said that 100% probability is not there in the solar system. So everything is a question of high probability, but you cannot expect 100% probability. So however you sure you are, it is better to mitigate your risk. And it's not like that eliminating the risk altogether. The idea is to reduce the risk because eliminating risk is not possible. Because eliminating the risk means 100% sure, confirm things you are eyeing out for, not possible. So we can at best minimize the risk. So, and risk management techniques are there, which definitely we're going to discuss. So uh, let's quickly have a 360 degree view of the financial planning. Fast thing fast, this, uh, this is like a need hierarchy, we call it as a master's hierarchy. So it's very much like a pyramid. The base of the pyramid appeals for the very basics. The insurance needs first needs to be taken care of. It's for the safety security purpose, for health, critical, all this insurance. So it's financial planners or for that reason, once you jot down your financial goals, he or she would be able to guide you on the same. Uh, once that need is fulfilled, the second step as we move ahead is about this investment planning to achieve the 
broad financial goals. As I've said, uh, it could be anything. Your vacation, it could be children marriage, children education, all these things. Um, and it also includes retirement planning, very, very important. As you could all understand, social security system, we have to plan it ourselves. So like way, the way we retire from our job life, similarly we need to retire from this planet Earth. It's a very hard fact. The only difference might be we need not know the exact date. But for this, we need to ensure that we distribute the wealth well to our next generation uh, so that they can enjoy the same. And also on this process, if proper planning is done, you can also think for some tithing, some, uh, you know, give it some thing back to the society. It helps in remove the economic disparity to the extent of our abilities, but little contribution creates a whole lot of difference in the society at large. So for all this and more, definitely financial planning is a very important thing before you start investing. Investments, you look out for returns, we would be discussing the same. It's a very micro picture, but macro purpose is that we need to identify what is the big picture. If I'm investing, what is the purpose for the same? Every output should be linked to an input. If we know we are saving 100 rupees, whatever amount it may be, but what is the purpose of the same? Whenever the purpose is decided, when we achieve that goal, we can achieve that, we can start using by the money to achieve that goal. So, <clears throat> we'll be, as discussed with you, we'll be discussing on the risk management front. Uh, yes, one of the simplest, and I believe in this session we'll be discussing some evergreen principles. So the best possible way to mitigate the risk, especially in equity, is to give your investments time to grow. As you could see in the back, this tree, whenever we uh, water our plants, is it like that, that yesterday night we water our plants and the next morning we were going to measure how, what is the size increment in the tree, how many inch it has grown? It is not like that. So money also takes time to grow. We uh, give decent amount of time to our bank FDs, date instruments, and the, this kind of things is more required for equity. So uh, this timing is very important and in fact there's a, uh, again a popular adage that is, it says that more that timing, the time you are spending in the market is important. As you could understand, there's an inherent meaning to it. Timing, I'm not saying it is important but it is tough. You never predict, out of 100 times you I try to find out picks and bottoms, maybe 7%, 8% would be successful. So instead of this timing, if we focus on, on the time we are spending in the market, it helps. So, Please remember, it is the time in the market which matters most rather than the timing the market. Um, before we start, it is important, the various asset class that we have just named a few minutes back about this maybe equity, maybe date, maybe gold or alternate asset class, we can just quickly have the benchmark figures of them, maybe down the line for the past three years, four years, over a period of time, how they have fared. And based on that, we can set the expectations. If we have our proper expectations set our, at our end, then accordingly we can plan. So setting the return expectations is important. If you are thinking at the huge stupendous kind of return, then a supernormal risk could only come at a supernormal, uh, supernormal profit comes at a supernormal risk. So I believe that undoingly, uh, unknowingly we are taking this risk. So it is very important to set the right expectations at our end. What exactly we are looking at, what are the instruments that is available and on, among the asset classes. Uh, and for this, tracking the benchmark among the asset classes would be helpful. Uh, we are from the uh, broking side, so just we have the privilege to discuss about this trading and investments. Uh, simple thing, time is very short, so trading and investments are different games. We need to bring out these two personalities, and it's only over a period of time, the time would going to tell us who wins over whom. Is Mr. X the trader has an extra age over the Mr. X the investor, or Mr. X the investor has an age over the Mr. X the trader? So it is within ourselves we need to find out and for this, this compartmentalization is very important. Absolutely segregate, we need to segregate before investment. This portfolio I am building for my investment purpose and this is for trading. This is not easy and maybe that is why maybe like writing down the financial goals, we need to write it down on a hard piece of paper and see it every day. This portfolio is for investment purpose, also you can have a separate demat account for the same. But at the end of the day it's the discipline which matters the most rather than the technicalities. So different rules, different skill set, different uh, time horizon tools, all these things are absolutely different for this trading and investment. So we should be very, very careful on that front. We shouldn't mix up the two because if we mix up between the two, at the end of the day, we, you never know what we are lending towards to. Uh, like we have shared that broad asset classes, there could be many, but just to 
share with you the familiar ones, the popular ones available in the Indian context at this point of time. Equity, debt, among the commodities, agro, non-agro, uh, among this non-agro, about this gold or the precious metals are going to come, gold, silver, whatever the case may be. And uh, real estate, obviously, it is there. This is, these are broad asset classes, you can say. Uh, so when we say asset allocation, uh, it means you should be allocating accordingly. Your risk appetite, the financial planner, uh, can guide you on the same. Uh, this is just to give you an idea among these asset classes, how they fare, how basically we say the risky, the riskier the instruments, you need to manage it accordingly with different tools, techniques. So this is the volatility comparison among the asset classes, the broad ones. As you could see uh, on the screen, on the slide, the red one represents the equity. See the amount of stupendous volatility it has. So in order to tame this dog, time is the best instrument. If you don't give time, just see what is the kind of roller coaster ride you would be having. So, very important and a very easy instruments. You should be having patience when we invest in equity. Uh, this yellow color line, uh, the pale yellow, it's basically represents the gold as an asset class. Not that volatile like equity, stable, steady, small growth, and the bottom lines, as you could see, these are the debt instruments. Very slow, stable, jacks are very low. So these are the uh, expect based on this you can set the expectations and you at your end that uh, where we are heading to. On the equity front, the popular instruments as we could discuss at this juncture is direct equity or the mutual funds. Uh, we'll be coming to individual of both direct equity and mutual funds, but uh, you need not to presume and assume mutual funds is only for equity. This is also for debt asset classes. Uh, the size of the industry, mutual fund industry, you can call this as a mutual friend. This friend advises us, each one of us, and uh, no less than 13 lakh crore. I'm giving you the September 2015 figure, 13 lakh 14,532 crore to be precise. And uh, fast, uh, if I say that direct equity has certain risk, then mutual fund has an edge because you get a professional guidance from the fund managers. Uh, asset allocation comes by default, all these things are there. Now, again, you might be wondering, this is a big domain, 13 lakh crore market, where to invest, where not to invest. For this also, in the next slides, we have just given a rough idea of this mutual funds, although we have not mentioned over here. Uh, you can start off with fund of funds. So you can invest in a mutual fund, which will going to invest in other mutual funds on your behalf. So these tools are available in this market, and options are pretty rich. So once we start looking, you dedicated your time towards this space, it would be, you would be immensely benefited, so do your portfolio. Uh, so debt and equity, as we see, uh, if we take more risk, return is also higher. But at the same point of time, the more risk you are taking, you need to take care of the additional support system, like managing the risk, asset allocation, all these things. Say, for example, sectoral funds, among the mutual fund space, equity space, it is quite uh, riskier. But for this, again, uh, you need to take a call on that particular sector, pharma, FMCG, whatever the case may be. So if you are confident about the sector and mutual fund do come up with the wonderful articles on the websites, their literature, you can start subjecting yourself to this uh, readings of the blogs and uh, you could be able to gauge from them. ELSS is there, tax saving tools. So when we say asset allocation, not only asset allocation across different asset classes, but also across different <coughs> instruments. That is also possible. So if we, if we say index funds, if, if we are taking exposures on the uh, Nifty, Sensex, whatever the case may be. So I'm not talking about derivatives today, but it could be ETF, exchange traded fund, it could be index funds, but among the equity space, pure equity, this is the safest bet you can think of. Pure equity, I mean to say. Balance funds is a mix of both equity as well as debt. And arbitrage funds, yes, that is again very safe, but uh, as you could understand, returns should be less because primary intention is to preserve the capital, but it's very tax efficient instrument because equity as an asset class, more than a year's time would going to give you the advantage of LTCG, long term capital gain tax. So we're using arbitrage funds, you get this advantage. Also, uh, so to say that uh, you can to a certain extent uh, fight out the inflation also. At the same point of time, if you come to the left hand of this window, liquid funds is also there, but for date, as you could understand, three years is the basically the benchmark for this. If you invest over and above three years, it is a long-term capital gain you could think of from, uh, from these debt funds, and below three years, it is a short-term capital gain. And also on the date, if you extend towards the higher end of this risk continuum, it is the both MIP monthly income plan, hybrid plans, where equity mix is also there along with debt components. So based on your risk appetite, you can always take a call on the same. Uh, 
again, a very uh, as you could understand in my capacity with IFL, I keep on doing these investor camps across nooks and crooks of the uh, various edges of the country. Now, uh, there's a mis uh, there's a misconception which I frequently come across. DMAT means equity, means khatra, paisa dub jayega. All this risk is there, but it is not like that. DMAT you can use this is, this is a house for which you can uh, if safely invest in debt instruments as well be it ncds be it liquid bees you can invest over there and also please note direct equity it is there but if you invest to the exchange platform or the secondary market directly that doesn't means you need to take direct uh, the individuals companies uh, scripts you can also invest in nifty bees by itself it has an inherent diversification index is a modern model portfolio it's well diversified uh, so this also gives you an additional edge, and just to add over a bit that uh, if, if you say the if you see the cases of international exchanges, volume in ETF is more than 70, 80 percent. Over here, things are shaping up well. We should start looking towards these options as well, like Nifty Bees, uh, Bank Bees. But admonition could be we need to take we need to gauge how uh, what is the valuation because money you pay, and uh, you are getting the value. So you need to find out the proper valuation of Nifty and the, you can say there's a challenge in case of Nifty that you would not be getting the annual reports by investing in Nifty. Although that particular Nifty units would be coming in your, in your DMAT account but no annual reports, no managing director, nothing is there. So how to cause this? Maybe tools like P, TTMP, trailing 12 months P of Nifty would going to, if you track those things, it would be helpful for you. See, it is said if it is below 20, below 18, if you get to have this Nifty or whatever the case may be in for broad market index, Sensex, uh, it, is, it is a good investment because if you invest at right value, you'd be able to manage the risk as well because risk comes if you buy a particular unit at a high price, that means you are unknowingly you are picking up risk. So risk not necessarily means the volatility of the instrument, it also means the price you, at which you are entering that particular uh, instrument. Uh, so in order to track the right valuation of Nifty, maybe this PE could be one of the essential tools we could think of because uh, if it is on the higher side, maybe 22 or these days it is hovering something on 21 odd levels or close to 22, maybe you can reduce some of the exposures. So and it, if the moment you get the time that is touching that 20, you start increasing the exposures, things like this. But you need to have a, you know, a temperature should be there to measure because it is a very heated instrument, nifty, you need not know what is in store for you. Also, uh, NCDs, I would like to put a few words on, say, you are, we, we have faith on uh, bank FDs. You are investing in SBI FDs or any banks. So at times, you, they have their NCDs also on the exchange platform. So why not having some exposures on them as well? It helps in uh, diversifying not only as a, like I've shared across the asset classes, but also across the instruments. And all alternate asset classes, if you're investing in the in, in, in for gold in the sense only for not for aesthetic value, just for investment purpose. So it's better to invest in paper form like gold bees and others. Uh, some of the basic di discipline on the equity allocation. These are broad thoughts. Nothing like that. It is a sacrosanct. This is the right thing, or other others cannot be applied on that front. Uh, a broad thumb rule could be 100 minus the age. It should be your equity exposure. A person of 30 should have a, maybe on the broader note of something around 70% equity exposure. And also, please note, within that equity exposure, somebody, say for example, a person of age 30, uh, having a investment exposure of 100, he's having 70 rupees of equity exposure. Within this 70, maybe large cap, a broader chunk, 60%. And within these large cap stocks, maybe index ETF or index funds, uh, a higher percentage allocation, maybe another 25, 30 percent. So in that, in this way, you can always try to mitigate the risk. We need to think the downside fast. Upside is always there. You know, in cricket, I would like to draw a metaphor over here. A fast bowler is there, a tail ender batsman is facing this fast bowler, not very comfortable. So we need to just spend his balls out so that later on, when the spin bowler comes, he can always score sixes and other stuff. Over here, if the portfolio is blown off, you'd hardly face the chance to capture them the next opportunity. So we need to sh protect our portfolio. Portfolio preservation is important. And the way money goes down, it doesn't come up that easily. A 10% fall on a 100 rupee investment brings down to 90. And an equal 10% upside from 90 is 99. And after that, again, you are still down by 1%. So these are the very basics we need to think of before investments. And also mid cap, small cap. Coming to small cap, it is better if the first time investors or those who are not seasoned investors couldn't give time to uh, monitor your investments for that reason. Uh, it's better to enter the, that jungle of space through mutual fund route. A professional fund manager is there, he would be able to guide you well. 
So small cap space, the, uh, otherwise if you could have the time, skill set to read the annual reports, nothing like it. You can always have a direct exposure. But in small cap space, beware, uh, allocation, diversification is, becomes all more important for these reasons. Uh, so as it is said, it is not possible to predict the tops and bottoms on regular basis and with high probability or certainty. So it is better to uh, have at least 10 to 15 percent equity exposure all the time. And uh, it helps because you never know. There's a popular uh, saying in the market, market tends to remain irrational as long as one is solvent. So you know, you comes out of the market and market has all the mood to give you back more money, but you are out of the market. So the little things, these are uh, evergreen wisdom, you can say. So I take this opportunity to just go through them once again. Uh, more or less, this is a penultimate slide I'll be going through. Uh, you can just, I will be giving you a mnemonics at the end of this slide. So these are the way that you can minimize the risk on equity investments or trading, whatever you say. Regular investments, equal investments, uh, diversify your investments. If you take mutual funds, you would be getting uh, these diversifications at one go. Go through SIP mode, systematic investment plan. Our, my next speaker would be Mr. Rao from Billa side, so Billa AMC. He would be taking you through the mutual fund aspects. SIP is a wonderful tool. It is not a product, it is a concept, but you can implement the same. Uh, so regular equal, diversif equal investments, diversifications, and followed by long-term investments. We have seen on the broad market index, you can get back to uh, your home and sitting on the computer, you can look at the data points of NSC and BSC. Uh, over a period of seven years and above, you're going to see broad market index have very low probability of giving negative returns. Even if we take 2008 into consideration, 2008 plus 2015, it was seven. So 2015, we are well above than the 2008 highs, even if you say. So th this is the way by which you can significantly uh, uh, put down the risk. Uh, invest in good quality business rather than good quality stocks. Think of a good business management who have commitments towards the business. This thing helps. So A grade business.